an unexpected solo expedition. I bring you 365 days in Pakistan through my lens. It was a year of adventure, culture, massive learning and personal growth. And this, ladies and gents, is episode one of a brand new series. You requested a breakdown of my route for the entire year, and your wish is my command. So buckle up and get ready for an episode detailing all the locations I visited, from north to south, the mountains to the sea. I used Islamabad and Karachi as a base to explore Pakistan's five provinces. Gilgit Baltistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, also known as KPK, Punjab, Sindh and Balochistan. Islamabad was my most favourite city in Pakistan, as it lies nestled in between the foothills of the world's tallest mountain range, the Himalayas. Beautifully juxtaposing rural with urban landscapes, this city is situated 1,700 metres above sea level, making it one of the highest cities in the world. It's incredible that there was nothing here only 65 years ago, when Islamabad replaced Karachi and was chosen to become Pakistan's capital. This place was once completely remote, and today stands as the country's political epicentre. The city has been impeccably designed, with an incredibly meticulous layout and modern infrastructure. I found Islamabad to be simply magical. I mean, you'd think it's enough of a flex to be snuggled in the Himalayas, but the city also lures you in with its charm and vibrancy. Islam means peace, translating Islamabad to the city of peace. The perfect name for a capital surrounded by lush greenery of the Western Himalayas. Islamabad was my base to explore the northern provinces, Gilgit Baltistan and KPK. My second base, Karachi, is a bustling metropolitan, the 12th largest city in the world and the biggest city in Pakistan. This former capital is located on the coast of the Arabian Sea and is the home of Pakistan's film industry. The city is a melting pot of cultures and languages. From iconic buildings to mouth-watering cuisines, there is something for everyone. Karachi is the capital of the province of Sindh, making it the perfect location to explore Sindh as well as Balochistan. So far, I've released just one documentary which recaps my entire year from China border down to the Iran border. And wow, the response was incredible. If you haven't yet watched, I strongly advise that you go and watch my documentary first and then come back here. It gained over 100,000 views in the first month and four Pakistani TV channels reached out. Now we are going to talk about British Pakistani Indian traveller Asra Hussain who has been in Pakistan for 365 years and has been in one year. Pakistan is a very different place. Every area of its own language, its own language, its own language, its own language, its own language. When I went to one area from another area, I felt like I left one country and went to another country. It's so different. It's so different. My journey started with the world's third tallest mountain range, the Hindu Kush Mountains. I embarked on a three-day adventure to Kumrat Valley. The journey is still not over. We've been driving for about seven, eight hours and I'm absolutely exhausted. So we've now got to transfer from the minibus over into Jeeps and the Jeeps are gonna take us off-road. Look at this, I've got my own tent. Just look how cute. And then here you've got these really thick blankets because you're not going to believe what the weather is right now. Bearing in mind, I have come from 35 degree heat in Islamabad. And right now here in Gumrat Forest, you're looking at about five degrees. I'm a Brit, so I'm used to this kind of weather. I've grown up in this kind of weather, but everyone else is shivering and quivering. I left at 7 a.m. and it's now 9.30 p.m. I have literally spent the entire day today traveling. 
I've decided I'm going to put on an extra pair of socks because it is necessary right now. I stayed at a fantastic campsite run by this gentleman whom you need to remember for a story later on. The campsite was stunning and overlooked the bluest river that I had ever seen. The Hindu Kush mountains were my first experience of the mountains of Pakistan and I had entered the world of rough mountain jeep driving through the most rugged and harsh terrains. was a lick of adventure that I had never tasted before and that tiny taster had me hooked. Oh my gosh! That just deafened my ears. Shit! Shukriya. <gasps> Now, after watching my documentary, people are expecting a vlog of my entire year. And I'm sorry to disappoint, but I'm not a vlogger. What kind of things were you in your mind, which you had in your mind, you had to go to the visa of Pakistan and you had to go to the visa of Pakistan. My daughter is from India. So, when I was in the Taluk, I was only in India. The Taluk was only in India. And my daughter was only in India. My daughter is from the roots of Pakistan, but my daughter is from the Parvarish, and all of them are in England. They are in England. So, when I was in India, I had a very strong English daughter and a very strong English daughter. So, when I was in university in 2011, तब जिंदगी में पहली दफा मेरे पाकिस्तान के दोस्त बने थे और वो मुझे बहुत छेड़ते थे कि ये कितनी बुरी बात है कि आप अपने वालदा की मुल्क गई है लेकिन अपने अपने वालिद की मुल्क में नहीं क्योंकि मैं कई दफा इंडिया गई हूँ बचपन में तो मेरा जवाब हमेशा होता था कि वालिद का मुल्क तो नहीं है ये मेरे दादा और पर दादा का मुल्क है तो फिर वो दोस्तों की वजह से मैं अपने दादा से पाकिस्तान के बारे में पूछी थी तो दादा की कहानियां सुन सुन के मैंने फिर तय किया था कि एक दिन मैं अपने दादा और पर दादा का मुल्क देखने जाऊंगी तो मैं जब पाकिस्तान गई मैं व्लॉगर नहीं हूँ मैं गई थी बस अपनी खुशी के लिए और वो ख्वाब पूरा करने के लिए मैं जब पाकिस्तान पहुंची थी मेरे पास था सिर्फ एक तीन महीने का टूरिस्ट वीजा और उस वक्त मैंने सोचा था की तीन महीने बहुत ज्यादा है मैं सिर्फ कुछ हफ्ते यहाँ वहाँ घूम फिर के मैं फिर एक दूसरे मुल्क में चले जाऊंगी फिर मैं जब पहुंची मैं बहुत मुतासर हुई पूरे तीन महीने मुकम्मल हुए और दिल नहीं फिर तीन से चार चार से पांच फिर छह महीने ऐसे करते करते एक साल गुजर गया और मैं कुंजरा पास यानी चाइना बॉर्डर से लेकर ग्वादर तक पहाड़ों से लेकर समंदर तक मैंने पूरा सफर किया हमें सुन के इतना मजा आ रहा है तो आपको करके कितना अच्छा लग रहा होगा बिल्कुल माय ट्रिप टू पाकिस्तान वॉजेंट फॉर वर्क विच इज वाई आई डिडेंट ब्लॉक द ये Don't be upset, but there are tons of places I stayed at, I lived in for months, yet there is no footage. I haven't made any real videos and all the sites that I saw in the city because you can Google them. I want to document journeys of mine that you can't Google. Experiences that you have to live through, you just can't type it into Google and that experience will come up. These are the kind of journeys that I want to take you on with me. I've always been more interested in people their culture, way of life, which is why I decided that if I'm not going to be vlogging, 
then I should at least document my unique experiences with people. Being able to connect with people is the reason why I even studied the national language, Urdu. Upon my return to Islamabad from Kumrat Valley, I set off on a new venture, this time into the province of Gilgit, Baltistan. My first stop was a seven-hour drive to Naran, a gorgeous valley nestled in the western Himalayas. It's a whole different world being immersed in the Himalayas, engulfed by lush greenery. I was picking up friends along the way who would very kindly look after me and take me around. I left the car door open, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh my god, that actually is so beautiful. Oh. Hi! <laughs> Today is my second full day here in Naran and my last day. I most likely will leave tomorrow. I'm just waiting to be picked up. I'm very excited about where we're going today. Naran is famous for multiple factors, such as its stunning natural beauty and Lake Surf al Maluk. Now, what's special about this lake is just like many wonders around Pakistan, Lake Surf al Maluk holds a mysterious legend, and it's a story definitely worth hearing. <laughs> और मिस्र का एक शहजादा जिसने उसको ख्वाब में देखा था तो वो वहां से उसके पीछे यहां तक आया झील पर सिफर में तो वो यहां पे नहाने आई थी अपनी साथी परियों के साथ तो उसके जो कपड़े थे जो उसके विंग्स थे वो साइड पे छोड़े हुए थे वो उसने उठा लिए शहजादे ने जिस टाइम वो बाकी परियां नहा के बाहर निकली उन्होंने अपने कपड़े पहने बाकी चीजें तो ये परी अपने कपड़े ढूंढती रही इसको नहीं मिले तो साची परियां चली गई वो कह ली रहेगी तो उस कुछ शहजादे ने वहां पे पकड़ लिया तो वो साची परियां जो गई वो जाके उन्होंने जाके उसको जो उनका था देव जिसके वंडर थी सारी उनको बताया तो वो देव फिर उसके पीछे यहां तक आया लेकिन वो परी इसको यहां पे नहीं मिली वो शहजादा उसको लेके यहां से नरान की तरफ निकल गया देव ने गुस्से में आकर झील की साइड पे एड़ी मारी और यहां से एक फ्लड सा बन के एक नरान की साइड पे एक दरिया से बहने लगा और नरान में एक बना हुआ जो टनल शहजादा और परी लोग कहते हैं कि उसमें चले गए थे जो आज तक नहीं पता कि किधर गए फिर और आज तक किसी को नहीं मिले तो शहजादे का नाम सैफ था जिसकी वजह से इस चीज का नाम सैफ अल मलूक पड़ी तो फिर जब शहजादा परी को पकड़ा उसने कपड़े लौटाया या नहीं After three days here in Naran, day four, I am officially leaving and moving on to the next place. I'm actually very, very exhausted. I've been up since 6 a.m. to pack my bag and just get everything sorted. This is the life of a traveler. We 
pack and we unpack and then we pack and then we unpack and we move on to the next place and it just keeps on going like that. The journey continues through the Himalayas until you reach the highest point of the highway, Babu Sertop, standing at an impressive 4,000 plus meters above sea level. A little while after Babu Sertop, you then enter one of the highest paved roads to exist on planet Earth the Karakoram Highway. This marvellous piece of engineering is cut through the Karakoram Mountains and zigzags its way into China where it then becomes the China National Highway. The Karakoram Mountains are the second highest mountains on Earth. They connect to the Himalayas, which is why they're also known as the Trans-Himalayas or Outer Himalayas. The transition from the Himalayas to the Karakoram Mountains is spectacular. The landscape change is drastic, from lush green to then dry and rocky, featuring majestic rivers that boasted some of the most gorgeous river beaches. The Karakoram Highway was a joint mammoth project between Pakistan and China, costing almost $2 billion and 20 years to construct. It's often coined as the eighth wonder of the world, and with no surprise, because this highway is the road trip of a lifetime. later I arrived in Gilgit city and the next morning hopped into a van that took me on a two-hour drive into a region known as paradise on earth Hunza Valley this ladies and gents is from where I bring you episode two I was invited to a tribal wedding with the Wahi people episode two takes you through this incredible three-day event where you'll see Wahi traditions culture and food the Wahi Mountain Tribe were the first tribe to take me in, and from them is where my journey with tribes in Pakistan began. Now, how did I get so many families to host me throughout the year? Each family has a unique story. For example, my trip to Kamrat was off-grid. No contact, no signal. So the military were sent to track me down. Now, it's a whole different story and it's very dramatic, but in the end, when the intelligence officer finally did track me down and found me in the middle of nowhere, it was the beginning of my friendship with him. And I ended up being hosted by him later on in the year. So every story is unique. My whole trip was such an adventure that the intelligence services intensely investigated me for the entire year. They just seemed to think that I was some secret agent. And that's another dramatic story for another day. Episode three covers the spectacular sights of Hunza, and you'll understand exactly why the region has been named as Paradise on Earth. A 
episode four brings you my one month experience of living with another mountain tribe in Hunza, the Barusho people. I share the story of how we met, my daily routine, teaching in schools, and even the final football match of the Hunza Premier League. I became very close to this household and fondly refer to them as my mountain family. When it was time to leave Hunza, I promised my mountain family that whenever it was time for me to go back to England, I would return to Hunza to say goodbye. After two and a half months in Gilgit Baltistan, I decided to return to Islamabad, but through a different route. From Gilgit City, I headed back into the Hindu Kush mountains. Remember the owner of the campsite when I visited Kumrat Valley? Well, he invited me to his hometown, Chakdara. It was a great few days of spending time with his family and sightseeing. He even made sure to take me to the White Palace as he wanted me to see that Queen Elizabeth had visited the royal family of Sawat. Upon returning to Islamabad, I took shorter trips such as Bishawar, Rothes Fortress, Multan and many more. Then it was time to repack my backpack and set off on a new venture to explore Punjab, Sindh and Balochistan. I jumped on a 25-hour overnight train that took me from Islamabad all the way to the south of Pakistan to the country's biggest city, Karachi. I lived in Karachi for two months, staying in Nazmabad, Sharif Aisal, Gulistan e Johar, and even Liari. Liari is said to be one of the oldest inhabited parts of Karachi and is referred to as the mother of Karachi. Its name is said to be derived from Liar, a tree that grows in a graveyard, which is ironic because Liari is famous for its gang war in 2012. Over 3,000 people were killed and Karachi was ranked as the sixth most dangerous city in the world. Since the war, the crime has dropped significantly and Karachi is now ranked as something like the 93rd most dangerous city. However, you can still today see the dents of bullets in the walls of Liari. I had befriended a guy whose family lived in Liari, so he would take me into the area. And at the time, I had no idea of its history and just thought of it as another part of Karachi. But later, once the locals found out that a British girl is staying in Liari, they were mortified and would share their horror stories of the war and why locals themselves never even look towards Liari. They would look at me baffled and say, Dekhi lardki kaha se aye aur Liari tak pahunchgi. Now there is no footage of any of this, but it's from Karachi that I bring you episode five, where I was introduced to my third tribe. I lived with the Baloch people at the Arabian Sea in a hidden gem within Karachi. Living on the beach is quite the experience, and I take you through my daily routine with the Baloch tribe, including teaching at their local school. Episode six is very exciting as I introduce you to a minority within Pakistan, the Hindu community. It was in interior Sindh where I witnessed these unique looking mud homes, was dressed as a Sindhi Hindu woman and just had a lot of fun with the community. Episode 7 is one that I still cannot believe actually happened because the military were making it so hard. After three and a half weeks of going back and forth, back and forth with the military, I finally gained permission to enter my final province, Balochistan. This place is mini Iran and the journey was an experience I'll never forget being sandwiched in between mountains on one side and the Arabian Sea on the other. I travelled the entire strip stopping in Surbandar, Gwadar, Ormara and then back to Karachi. On my way back to Islamabad from Karachi I stopped in Pakistan's second biggest city, Lahore. Now Lahore is the cultural heartbeat of Pakistan, known as the city of gardens and the pearl of Punjab. The city is brimming with rich history, culture, iconic landmarks and majestic Mughal architecture. Lahore is often referred to as the heart of Pakistan and there's a saying that those who haven't seen Lahore haven't seen Pakistan. By this point I was struggling massively with the heat so it was a quick two week trip of seeing all the main sites and then I was back in Islamabad. At this point, it had now been 10 months of traveling and I was homesick as hell. I missed my life in England and I knew that my time in Pakistan was coming to an end. 
but don't forget about the promise that I made to my mountain family. So, I set off on a mission to return to Hunza to fulfill my promise of saying goodbye to my mountain family. The main target is I want to go back to Hunza. First time round, I went this side. This time round, I want to go from this side. So I'm gonna start here from Rattalan Bites, where we are right now, and I'm gonna go round in this circular route to Hunza and then return to Islamabad from this route. I planned it through a route that would take me two months, with the first stop being Sawat. From here, I bring you episode eight, my experience of being hosted by a beautiful Pashtun family in the Hindu Kush mountains. Episode nine, I enter the forbidden land of Pakistan where nobody goes, Kohistan. I was warned over and over not to visit and I never had any intention of going, but I ended up making a very strong contact. Remember my trip to Kamrat when the military was sent after me? Well, the intelligence officer who tracked me down turned out to be Kohistani, so he invited me to Kohistan to be hosted in his family home. Episode 10 will have you mesmerized. My Kohistani host took me on a three-day trek where I crossed multiple glaciers to arrive at the most beautiful glacial lake. I have arrived to Drosh Chitral. This is only a quick pit stop before I head off further into the valleys of Chitral. It's really exciting where I'm staying at the moment. I'm currently at the fortress of Drosh. Now the family that are hosting me at Drosh Fort, their great grandfather was a prince here in Chitral. He was one of 15 sons. The father had sent all 15 sons to different areas of Chitral to govern. So my host's great grandfather was positioned here in Drosh to govern this area. Both the sons are polo riders. So they've just casually got horse stables in the back garden as royalty do. Now my hosts are actually such an incredible down to earth and humble family. You wouldn't even think that they are linked to such a huge royal bloodline. And this is their lovely dog, Figo, over here, who's just sitting on my foot casually. He's literally the, one of the most friendliest dogs I've ever come across in my life. The wind is picking up, it's going to rain, I cannot wait. Hello, what are you doing in here? The things you find in royal areas. Figo, don't scare it. It's running away. I've been here in Drosh Fort for the last couple of days. I leave today. I'm going to another fortress. Now, I already told you that the great grandfather of my host at Drosh Fort was a prince of Chitran and he was stationed at Drosh to govern that area. So the fort that I'm at right now in Nagar Fort, he was the younger brother, I believe, that was also a prince, and was stationed here to govern Nagar Fort. Episode 11 takes you into a hidden valley within Chitral, home to the most fascinating mountain tribe. The Kalash people have their own religion, language, culture, and my timing couldn't have been better. I had the opportunity to attend one of their religious ceremonies. Three different cars and over five hours later, I've left Galash Valley and come over to Upper Chidral in a place called Booney. I'm currently with my Booney hosts and their beautiful German shepherd. Look at him, Bodo. So my hosts, they have brought me over to a fabulous viewpoint. Looking over at Booney, even Bodo is enjoying the view. Look at him. 
I'm trying to walk the dog, but the dog is walking me. Bloody hell, Boro. Hello guys, we are now in Kaklash Meadow. This is our Buni. We allow this place, Buni, this very beautiful place. I have arrived in a place called, I believe it's Mustaj. You joke again, I'm getting Mustaj. Mustaj. Okay, so I have arrived in another place in Upper Jadral called Mustaj. Honestly, I'm losing track of the names of these places because I'm ending up in a lot of places that I never intended on staying in. The gentleman that I hitched a ride with, the Jeep driver, he's very kindly hosted me in his family home. One of the daughters of the home that I'm staying in is very kindly taking me on a walk around her area. Northern Pakistan is really big on polo. I've come across so many polo riders, some as young as 15, 16 years old. So here I am on my walk, just coming across another polo horse. Look at this butte. Aren't you pretty? Hello. Oh gosh, he got scared. These horses are incredibly aggressive. They're not like any of the horses that I'm used to in England because I've never come across a polo horse in England. So I've come across tons and tons of polo horses, tons and tons of polo riders, but I'm yet to watch a polo match. I'm not sure where this little one is taking me. Now, the reason why I'm staying in a random location that I never intended on staying in with random people that I met uh, five minutes ago is because the location that I actually want to go to, I'm not able to find. The location that I want to go to, I'm not able to find a car to take me there today. So the gentleman that I hitched a ride with, the Jeep driver, he very kindly said to me that, look, why don't you stay with me tonight, stay in my family home, we will host you, and hopefully we can find you a car tomorrow. If not, we'll see if we can get you a car the day after. So I'm here for either one or two nights. I'm really hoping I'll find a car tomorrow and I can just get moving with my journey. But for now, I am in this beautiful village being uh, guided by this, uh, I don't know how, how many years uh, okay, I'm being guided by the seven-year-old. Oh, and this little one has done a fabulous job. Look at where she's brought me. I was not expecting this at all. Shabash, Ashi. Ooh, you can see the snow-capped mountains in the distance. Beautiful. Hello. Aap log kya kar rahe? Khel rahe. Khel rahe. Aap kya khel rahe? Topi. Aapki topi bahut maze ki hai. Main aapki topi dekh sakti hu. Ha. Aap zara topi dikhaiye. Kitne maze ki topi hai. Wow. Aap dono ne aisi topi kyun nahi pehni hai? Hamare paas nahi hai. Theek hai, main aapke liye lekar aaungi. Phir aap pehnenge na? Pehnenge. Sahi hai. Main abhi ja rahi hu. Bye. 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 Day two in Mastouj, my host very kindly gave me his bedroom to stay the night, so I, I slept really, really well. Look at this weather. The weather is absolutely beautiful. They're cooking my breakfast right now. 
अभी पकड़ के आप अभी पका रहे हैं My host went out this morning and caught trout fish for me. Oh look, the doggies come as well. He's so lovely. His name is Kain Azish. Jig. Jig. Up the Angrezo can have a K. I'm trying my share at uh, making a chitrali roti. What I find really interesting about their bread is that it's very, very thick. As you can see, look how thick their bread is. And the bread that I'm used to, we call it chapati. It's very, very thin. You'll see in different parts of Punjab. But here in Chitra, they have quite thick bread. Yaar, what's the name of Karo, karo. What's the name of Look at this, and this is what you call a chitrali hat. Look at this, what a fabulous, fabulous hat. <laughs> this little one is taking me up to another viewpoint. Look at this climb. Go on, good girl. Shabash, Arshi. Ah, you meant in a real. Hello. We're going over to the dog. Hello. You are beautiful. I'm trying to take a photo with Max over here, but he just won't sit down. Something I've noticed about Chidrali people and just Chidrali in general is they all have dogs. There are so many dogs around this area, I love it. It feels a little bit like I'm back in England, except that the dogs are a lot more aggressive here than they are in England. Come on, Max, I want to take a photo with you, please. <laughs> no, you <would> you Arshi, cheers. My host Shabikola has brought me out for a walk and I'm so excited right now because look at this bridge, we're about to cross this rickety rackety bridge. Up we go. Now this is really exciting. Woo! I'm the Addy. Oh, it is really windy. <laughs> After a two day stay in Mastuj, Upper Chitral, today I've managed to grab a passenger van that you can see behind me here that's taking me to my next destination, Pandar, Funder, not sure how you say it. I had to leave at a horrifying five o'clock in the morning today. It's currently 8 a.m. We're taking a pit stop. I've got my cup of tea, my chai in my hand, and the pit stop couldn't have been at a better location. I'm currently at the highest polo ground in the entire world, Shandur. Just take a look at these views, it's absolutely stunning. Take a look at this road, the entire journey is like this. It's this raw, rocky mountain route. 
That's the check post over there, so I had to check in there because I am a British foreigner. That is where everyone is taking a break and I'm loving the clouds and this beautiful, beautiful cold weather. Look at me, I'm wearing a jacket. I'm so happy to be wearing a jacket. officially left the region KPK and entered Gilgit Baltistan. This is the first stop in GB. We have arrived in Pandar. police that drive by they clock that I'm a foreigner and they stop immediately I just had two policemen on a motorbike stop and they said ma'am are you okay you're a foreigner aren't you and I'm like I've checked in at the check post I've done what I'm supposed to do they're like no 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 we just want you to know that we're here for anything that you need when you are a foreigner in Pakistan the system works a little bit different for us we do have to check in at check post you have got to alert the police or the military depending on where you are Look at this folks, I was up there on that road that you can see in the distance and now I am down inside the valley. Look at this, it's stunning. I should have stuck to the bloody road. But here we are on an adventure following these kids. Day two in Fundar Valley and I've climbed down into the valley to see if I can hang out with some people who live in the houses inside it. So I'm going towards this home with the yellow roof. Right, let's see if anyone's inside. It's so cute. The family have invited me inside their home. This is the living room. We were sitting in here, chilling out, and now I'm going into the kitchen. They're making tea. Look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> they're all sitting behind me. I'm not filming them, I'm filming myself, right? And I'm just telling them stories about England. They're telling me stories about their life in Funders. I've just left their home. That was so much fun. Those people were just ever so kind, so hospitable and lovely. The whole family gathered around in the kitchen to hear my story. They were so fascinated by my story about us being five generations in England. Growing up, we knew nothing about Pakistan and I went against my family and came out here alone. I've come over to the bridge now. We're going to cross the bridge and see what's on the other side. Just look at how beautiful and picturesque. Even when the sun isn't out and it's chilly and it is pretty cold and windy. Oh, look at this gap. I'm currently at a place watching something I have wanted to watch ever since I've arrived in Pakistan and that ladies and gents is Polo. Salam alaikum. Polo is really big in northern Pakistan and I've come across so many polo horses and so many polo riders but still I hadn't seen a polo match so I was dying to see at least one. Bhai, aap ye shandur ki tiyari kar rahe? Now, when I was traveling from Mustoud to Funded, I stopped. We had a pit stop at Shandur. Shandur is the highest polo ground in the world. So, what's happening right now is different areas all around northern Pakistan they're all preparing for this big match this big polo match is going to happen in July in Shandul right, so right now everyone across northern Pakistan is in serious training for the Shandul festival it is such an aggressive sport oh it's coming in whoa 
I'm sitting here on this edge praying that it doesn't come and hit me in the face <laughs> because they smack it so hard. Then it was goodbye funded and I was back on the road to complete the last leg of my final two month tour. It was a six hour drive to Gilgit city, which sits at 1500 meters above sea level in the Karakora mountains and used to be a Buddhist center. I really enjoyed visiting the remains of Buddhist temples around Gilgit, some of which were beautifully carved into the mountain. After an overnight stay in Gilgit city, I hopped into another passenger van, which took me on a two hour drive to my final destination, Hunza Valley. From Hunza, I bring you episode 12, which is mission complete. After eight months, I've reunited with my mountain family to fulfill my promise of saying goodbye before I leave Pakistan for good. Episode 13, I take you to the best school that I've ever seen. The headmistress is no ordinary lady. She takes the education of her school a step further. She has her students learn life skills from how to get ready to even domestic duties. Episode 14, I show you what I eat in a day as a mountain girl. You'll be shown a variety of local mountain dishes that are eaten throughout the Himalayas, Karakorams and Hindu Kush mountains. And the last episode is my very emotional goodbye to Pakistan, where I make my way back home to England and reflect on my one year journey. So my Pakistan series will consist of 15 Dean exciting episodes. Can you imagine my workload? Intelligence services and military drama aside, my year in Pakistan was one of the most incredible years of my life. And I feel great pride that I was given such an opportunity because my entire life, my identity has only ever revolved around being British or being Indian. It's a very interesting thing about you, that your parents are Pakistani and your parents are from India. You are British. My dad is the first time that he left Pakistan and he was here in Britain. Then he shifted his entire family. So when I was born, I was with my parents, my parents, my father, my father, my father, my father. All the relatives of the family, मेरी जो वालदा है वो इंडिया छोड़ के यूके तब ही शिफ्ट हुई जब उन्होंने मेरे वालिद से शादी की उनकी मुलाकात कैसे हुई ये शादी क्यों हुई ये एक अलग कहानी है मैं बस ये बताऊंगी कि वीर जारा वाली कहानी नहीं है जब भी भी मैं लोगों को बताती हूँ कि मैं आदमी हूँ कि ना भी पाकिस्तानी हूँ सारे ये पूछते हैं कि ओह वीर जारा की तरह लेकिन I've got a pin stuck in for India. I've been to India four times. My mum would take my sister and I when we were younger because her support system and her family base are in India. With my dad's family, they're all in England, right? So I've been to India multiple times, but as you can see, the neighbouring country, my granddad and my great grandfather's country, is completely empty. So now I shall be sticking a pin in, which is just so very exciting. Look at that. Now we've got both India and Pakistan ticked off the bucket list. Thank you for such kind words and love for my documentary. Your support has made me so incredibly excited for this series. I want you all with the next 14 episodes to not only see Pakistan through my eyes, but to also connect with the country in ways that you've never before, especially those of you of Pakistani descent. But if you come, you can go to the outside people. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm from England and my birth is in England, so I'm from Urdu and Tutti Puti. Um, और मैं पाकिस्तान पहली दफा आई हूँ जिंदगी में जिंदगी में पाकिस्तान नहीं आई हूँ मेरी ख्वाहिश है कि और भी लोग बाहर से खास जो पाकिस्तान के लोग है जो बाहर मेरी तरह उनकी पैदाइश और परवरिश बाहर हुई है मैं चाहती हूँ कि आप भी यहाँ के अपने मुल्क देखें अपने आ, अपने वालदे अपने दादा दादी अपने नाना नानी के मुल्क देखें मैं अपने वालद के अपने दादा के मुल्क में आई हूँ आई रियली अप्रीशिएट हाउ थाउजेंड ऑफ यू कनेक्टेड विद माई स्टोरी एन वेपेज आई स्पेक अबाउट माई ग्रैंड फादर I really love how many of you shared that it must have been granddad who kept me safe throughout the year. And although he will never hear any of the stories that you're about to hear, he saw it all from above. High five. High five. What's also fascinating is that the day of my TV interview happened to fall on the same day as Grandad's death anniversary. Now I've never been on television before, let alone live television. 
So the fact that my first ever TV experience happens to be Pakistani TV and happens to fall on the same day as Grandad's death anniversary makes me seem to think that maybe Grandad was the one behind it all. चलें अब आप हमें अपने फ्यूचर प्लान्स के बारे में बताइए तो मैंने अभी ये नया सीरीज शुरू किया है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल पे ये सीरीज मेरे दिल की बहुत करीब है क्योंकि मैंने ऐसे किस्म की मुल्क के बारे में बनाई है जो मेरे दिल की बहुत करीब है ऐसे किस्म की मुल्क के साथ जिससे तीस साल बाद मेरा ताल्लुक बनाए तीस साल बाद पहचान बनी है तो मैंने बहुत दिल से बहुत प्यार से बड़ी मेहनत से मैंने ये सीरीज बनाई तो उम्मीद है की आप सबको ये सीरीज पसंद आए आप जरूर देखिएगा आप दुआओं में याद रखिए दुआ करे की ये सीरीज हम हम देखेंगे और आप जो लोग हमें देख रहे हैं भाई आप असरा का YouTube चैनल जरूर फॉलो करें वहाँ पे आपको इनका ये पूरी डिटेल डॉक्यूमेंट्री मिल जाएगी बहुत अच्छा लगा आपसे असरा बात करके बहुत मस्बत वाइब एन आई बिलीव आपकी डॉक्यूमेंट्री को देखने वाले लोग हैं वो इससे जरूर इंस्पायर होंगे आपने बहुत अच्छे तरीके से फिल्म किया इन मनाजिर को तो हमारी बेस्ट विशेष आपके साथ है दोबारा जब भी आइए आप हमारे स्टूडियो में आएंगे ठीक है असरा हुसैन ट्रेवलर हमारे साथ मौजूद थी इनकी डॉक्यूमेंट्री जरूर देखिए आपको पाकिस्तान का एक बहुत खूबसूरत चेहरा मजीद बेहतर नजर आएगा